Recently, I came across this interesting article, which is titled J.R.R. Tolkien and the Necessity of Hope, which is written by Henry T. Edmondson. And I found this really fascinating because it resonates with some themes that I also find and I see in Tolkien's work. And these are difficult times for a number of reasons for a lot of us. And Tolkien also saw difficult times. He saw the world wars and drew some philosophical lessons which can be applied to periods of difficulty in our life. So the author begins by posing a question of the meaning of hope and what is hope. It is a word which is perhaps very difficult to define. For Tolkien, especially in Lord of the Rings, hope was an enduring philosophy which motivated the actions of his characters and allowed them to deal with the difficult circumstances that they found themselves in. In a sense, his magnum opus is a commentary on hope and the meaning and importance of hope. So the author sees two kinds of hope in Lord of the Rings, what he calls false hope and genuine hope. A fool's hope, in a sense, comes from delusion and might lead to a false sense of optimism. But both that optimism and that hope is lost when the delusion is shattered. Now, in addition to this fool's hope or the false hope, there is another kind of hope. That is a more enduring hope. And that is a hope which drives all the characters of the story towards their ultimate goals. Or I would say the heroes who are motivated by honest desires and honest belief in this honest and enduring hope. So this true hope should not be confused with a sense of optimism about everything in life. Optimism, the author says, deals with probabilities. And probability is just a matter of odds. If the odds are sufficiently favorable, optimism is a reasonable attitude. But in The Lord of the Rings, these odds are rarely, if ever, in favor of the people who oppose evil and stand for good. In fact, they are always fighting against this overwhelming force of evil. And the odds for them, for the good, are very few. But as one of the characters, Legolas, says, Oft hope is born when all else is forlorn. So what is the difference between this true hope and optimism? Optimism is fundamentally just a reading of the odds. If you read them correctly, and if the odds are in your favor, you should be optimistic. And if they are not, you should expect the worst. Of course, if you have false hope, you will be optimistic even when you read the odds and the odds are not in your favor. And that is delusion. And because the odds are not in your favor, your delusions will be shattered very soon. But this enduring hope comes when you do read the odds, when the odds are against you, and yet you continue to fight on for something, for something that is larger than yourself. And this is this true sense of hope. Another character, Aragorn, says, when they come to a final battle, we now come to this very brink, when hope and despair are akin. And there is a lot here that we can unpack. But what he fundamentally means is that we are facing darkness. The odds are against us and we are most likely to fail. So any reasonable person, if he reads the situation on the basis of odds, despair is a very rational conclusion based on a reading of what is likely to happen. Except if you have hope. If you have hope, even when you read the odds, you are anchored in some ideals or some principle which is higher than this mere darkness. Again, Legolas says, follow what may, great deeds are not lessened in worth. That means just that choice of fighting for something right or fighting for something moral, even when you know that the odds might be against you, even if you know that you will fail and failure will follow, that does not diminish the value of your great deed. And just by doing that great deed, just by taking the stand of rightness, of morality at that point of time, and not giving in to despair, you have shown the power of true hope, which can lead to great things. Again, Gandalf says, It is not our part to master all the tides of the world, 
but to do what is in us for the succor of those years, wherein we are set. Uprooting the evil in the fields that we may know, so that those who live after may have a clean earth to till. There is no final hope, there is no utopian dream. There is a struggle, they are caught in a struggle and that struggle might not end. Even if it ends now, it might reappear again later, as anyone who knows the mythology of the Lord of the Rings. But if you take a stand, if you take a stand of right and morality now, even if you might lose this assault, this assault of darkness upon light, you give something back, you add to that enduring hope. And that enduring hope in the future might motivate or might encourage or might be the spirit which is necessary for someone else in the future to meet a second assault. And that person might fail again at the second assault. But if he takes that stand, if he does that great deed, he again adds to that enduring hope, which again is something that someone else in the future again will draw strength from. And by taking the stand, you add to the value, the enduring value of hope. And one day that hope, that enduring value, will become strong enough to turn the tide of darkness. And so one of Tolkien's characters says, Hope and memory shall live still in some hidden valley where the grass is green. Hope may thus be drawn from what has been as a means of rightly anticipating what might be.